السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اما بعد so i've been wanting to start a book in sira since a long time um we already have a book which is going on in aqida we have a book as usual our basic foundation is nahwa and sarf we have multiple books which are going on in nahwa and sarf um, we have a short 400 questions in nahwa and sarf we have ajumia in urdu which is going on hidayat now in english madina books of course and there's arabia benedict for reading purposes um uh in we have tafsir ibn kathir which is going on um since a long time in tafsir and in hadith we have sahih al-bukhari which we've been reading but i've been wanting to start a book in um uh, the seerah of the of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and what better book than our sheikh uh, safi rahman mubarak furi um uh, from india and this is the book rahiq al-makhtum the sealed nectar and there might be uh, several uh, events in the seerah which might be um, in this book, Rahiq um, al-Makhtum, which would have like authenticity issues and so on. Because seerah was not always given, uh, you know, it does not have uh, maghazi and all that. The same authenticity as in fiqh, uh, in Bukhari or Muslim or others. So there might be some issues and so on, but inshallah. Um, if I know about its authenticity, um, we'll talk about it, inshallah, ta'ala, like some events here and there. Um, but after we finish this book, whenever we finish, um, inshallah, after two, three years, whenever, uh, we'll do a book, um, وَلَمْ يَثْبُتْ عَنِ النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم. And there's a book where he compiled, uh, I think it's by Shoshan uh, Hafidahullah, um, and he compiled a book where, uh, you know, what is prevalent in the seerah and what is not authentic. We'll do that book maybe after this book. Uh, and that's only in Arabic. We don't have a translation available. So these PDFs have, um, you can go to my website, uh, Arabic Enthusiast. And in the resources section, I've added them. Uh, there's one Arabic book, this one, Rahiq al Maktum. Uh, this link I've made it available. Um, this is, uh, I think, uh, by Qatar. Yeah, Dawlat Qatar. Wizaratul uh, Awqaf. Washoon al Islamia by Idaratul uh, Shoon al Islamia, Dawlat al Qatar. I found this better print. There's another one, uh, uh, similar one, but this is on Noor uh, book. And this one, this is a wonderful edition. I found it on Dar PDFs. Dot .org. This link is also available. Um, you can download around 80 MB or something. Um, previously, we used to have the PDF, which was a black and white version of it. This is a wonderful color version of the book and a uh, very, very good book PDF available. Um, so let's begin. Let's begin our Rahiq al Makhtum. As usual, we read the Arabic as well because that's the whole purpose, right? Our channel is called Arabic Enthusiast because our goal is to improve our Arabic. And this book um, might have a little difficult vocabulary because I've tried reading it many times and never actually got into it because it's just so difficult and so many hard words. So don't mind me, like usual, I'll keep searching for words if I don't know the meanings um, in between the class. Right, because that's how. Because the first and pur purpose is for me to benefit. Right, it's like reading a book. Uh, my channel is all about reading books, and uh, it's like reading a book with an open window where you can also join in and enjoy reading books uh, with me in Arabic as well as in English. And that's a goal to read Sira in Arabic uh, so that we increase our vocabulary. Yeah, because the feelings you get, the inspiration you get when you read it in Arabic. Is something else, right? You can't even explain that. Translation is just a watered-down version of it. So, Rahiq al-Makhtum, Bahtun fi sirat al-Nabawiyya, ala sahibiha afdal salati wa salam. Rahiq al-Makhtum is from the words of the Quran, the seal nectar, khitamu, khitamu misk, wa fi dhalika fal yatanafisil, wa tanafisun, wa mizajuhu min tasneem, before that, right? Uh, 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 what's the words? Um, <clears throat> the words is 
فتامه مس وفي ذلك فليتنافس سو اتس ا سيل نيكتار ان جنا وي جيت ا درينك ويت ا سيلد نيكتار اند اتس ا ريسيرش ان سيره النبي على صاحبها افضل الصلاه ذا بيست صلاه ان سلام اون بي ذا بروفيت عليه الصلاه والسلام بايوغرافي اوف ذا نوبل بروفيت صلى الله عليه وسلم صفي الرحمن المبارك بوري ان اربيك هيز نيم اوف كورس بيكمز مبارك فوري Safi uh, Rahman Mubarak Furi. So let's go to the foreword and we'll read it from the English one because, you know, foreword and all that. In Arabic, and the uh, the preface, every time it's with very hard words. Kalimatu Ma'ali Sheikh Muhammad Ali Al Harkan. This is, I think, Al Amin Al Amit Al Rabit Al Alam Islami. This is by the, um, there was a competition held. We'll read it in the English one. Uh, and uh, the competition was. Uh, held by muslim world league in 19s something um we'll go down so this is the content right very beautiful look at the pictures and all that right very nice book alhamdulillah barakallah fi whoever published daw salam and uh, this is the book which we did not find out oh, we can actually click on them and they go back oh nice hyperlinked right nice nice let me go back it was i just click click by mistake <clears throat> it's hyperlinked all this is hyperlinked i guess nice okay contains all this isra miraj and everything um, it's so it's a long book obviously these are huge books in sira and we'll go through them inshallah whenever we reach them inshallah this is the publisher's note of course um uh, by abdul malik mujahid of daul salam Barak Allah, he, uh, he has done tremendous work with his Dao Islam publications with authentic books. And one of my friends, he has an interview, right? Uh, Mu'in, Sheikh Mu'in, who's a student now in Madian City in his final year. Uh, he has he knows him and he went to his office uh, in the Riyadh or somewhere. And uh, 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 Abdul Malik Mujahid, he said, uh, I'm giving you a gift. And the gift was... You, uh, whatever books you can carry. And he had Dao Salaam, you know, it's so huge. You can carry whatever books you can carry on your own person with your bags or whatever. You're allowed to take them for free. And uh, our brother, uh, he carried, you know, so many books. And he realized that, uh, you know, he's a student of knowledge. So obviously he carried some kilos of books. You know, it is two hands with huge bags and all that in his back. And this. so all this is free, right? In, in the book so he gave a gift barat uh, may allah protect him <clears throat> and uh, yeah, salam. um so this is by him that he says the heart of a muslim is preserved and love for the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam there were various books and so on um, you can go through this seal nectar is a book of great value and praiseworthy life of the muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam this was a um Jamisa. first islamic conference was held in 1976 There was a competition and 150,000 riyals, uh, grand prize of the first best five books. And this book in 1976, this was in 1976, and this was the first book. <clears throat> so the 171 manuscripts were received by Muslim World League, 171. 85 were in Arabic language and 64 in Urdu, 21 were in English and one in French and Hausa. <clears throat> And Sheikh Safiya Rahman Mubarak Furi, uh, he got his first prize of 50,000 riyal, approximately 50,000. Yeah, uh, first prize of 50,000 Saudi riyal. And the second was Majid Ali Khan from New Delhi, India. Third was from Dr. Nasir Islamic uh, Lahore, uh, University Islamic University Lahore. And then Ahmed Mahmoud of Egypt was the fourth prize. The fifth prize was Abdul Salam Hashim of Medina Munawwara. Right, so this book got the first prize in 1976, and then the English translation was made, and uh, this was printed in 2002. Right, oh, less than yeah, 2002. He's written here, and the author's autobiography. Who is Sheikh Safiya Rahman Mubarak Furi? Um, so he gives this introduction. The following is an updated outline of the life of Sheikh Safiya Rahman Mubarak Furi. May Allah have mercy upon him, uh, upon him uh, based on the brief. Biography detailing his life and professional career presented to the Muslim World League while compiling this book. So you had to give your introduction. Who are you and all that? So his name is Safiya Rahman. Kunya is Abu Hisham. Linya is Safiya Rahman ibn Abdullah ibn Muhammad Akbar ibn Muhammad Ali ibn Abdul Mumin ibn Fakhirullah Mubarak for the Azami. 
He was born in Hussainabad uh, in uh, Mubarakpur, Azamgarh district, and in the northern province of India. Educational. So he started at home reading the Quran from a grandfather and uncle. Then he was admitted to Madrasa Arabiya Darut Talim in Mubarakpur. And uh, it's in UP, Uttar Pradesh, yeah, Mubarakpur. And uh, in Shawal of 1337, 1954, he got Madrasa Ihya Ululum in Mubarakpur. Two years later in Shawal, I joined the Madrasa Faidur Alam. Uh, Maunath Bhanjan Azamgar and then I've seen a master's degrees he received a master's degree certificates of Malvi in 1959 and Alim in 1960 government education board and then Fadil degree in 1976-78 double Fadil he has professional life after completing Mother Safaid uh, he began teaching preaching lecturing and delivering sermons however did not permit to stay in one place he could not stay March 1963, he joined the Madrasa Fayyad Aam in Maunath Bhanjan as a teacher. In a, he started teaching in the Madrasa and uh, Dawul Hadith in the same year, 1996. 1969, a principal of Madrasa Fayyad Aam, Siouni MP, MP India. Um, out of four years, 1972, he went to, he became a principal and so on, 1399, where's academic? So where's principals and where's Madaris is teaching in India? Jami Salafiya Banaras, he joined in as a professor. Uh, his books and compilation, he has written various books, about 17 books. Uh, some of them, are, we, we get the magazine called Muhaddith, Jami Salafiya. Um, uh, was published in 1980, right? There's a Muhaddith magazine. Um, and then, he joined the Islamic University of Madina Munawara. During that period, wrote a number of articles. He has a lot of books. Uh, Alhamdulillah, Alameen. May Allah accept. And from Jamis Salafiya Banaras, um, he has written this book right, in very short time. Barakallahu uh, fihi. And then, Hafid, Rahmatullah, may Allah have mercy on him. Safir Rahman Mubarak Puri. Uh, he passed away in first on 1st December 2006. He passed away on 1st December 2006. That means almost uh, 15 years ago. Almost, um, 16. <clears throat> uh, he has a book called uh, Various Books, Raudatul Anwar, Fi Sirat in Nabi Al Mukhtar. Um, I think this book is uh, a seal nectar. Uh, not seal nectar. When the moon split, there's his here a shorter version, and that is good if you want to start the moon split shorter version where he does not have all these things here. You can download that book also. And when the moon split, right? It's a shorter version of the Sira. Then he has an explanation of Bulu al Maram. Very good. We were doing those books, uh, Bulu al Maram, on this channel, but we stopped due to the sheikh not being available if you watch the playlist. Okay, subhanahu wa ta'ala, might and majesty belong to him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May the peace and blessings of Allah upon him, alayhi salam, may peace be upon radiallahu anhu. May Allah be pleased with him, radiallahu anha. May Allah be pleased with her. And we don't know all this, right? Radiallahu anhu, radiallahu anhu. May Allah be pleased with all of them. Location. So let's begin. And all this is right. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, shafa'a wa dajafi'a. This is his... Uh, by the uh, ma he, they didn't bring in this book. This is Lirabat al Alam Islami, the World Muslim League. He wrote all this. You can go through. And if you want Muhammad Nashir, this is the publisher of Qatar who has written all these things. Yeah, um, about Rahih al Maktum, Kalimat al Mu'allif. And this is the uh, Mu'allif, the compiler, Sheikh Safi Rahman Mubarak Puri. He has uh, given a forward. You can go through this also. That this book, his manhaj and all that's in writing. This book um, about the competition, Wayna Min Saadati Hosni Havi. I think there's a translation available in this book. Um, there's a black and white version also, which is the older version of this. Um, yeah, there is. Uh, no, 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 no. Even in the black and white, like you, I have both of them downloaded. I'll show you the black and white version if you want. It's the same one. 
this um black and white yeah this is the black and white one which you used to read uh there this is the same right the heart of every muslim publishers not author's biography we just read this right and this is the black and white one the contents yeah they have the contents you can read this one also so we start with location and is to place fall um, a situation situation of the and that situated place now many people when they start sira they don't like this uh, section and they say that oh why should we read about location and, and one of my friend um, he was saying oh, i don't like uh, uh, because he starts with this tribe we want to read about rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam but he's talking about the tribes and this that location yemen and this that right but this is uh, important that's why he he says the need for this why do we have to start with location of Arab tribes so inshallah we'll just go through this if you don't find it interesting you skip this episode <laughs> about the tribes and all but tribal system is what if you understand that you know you understand the situation behind and how it was going before the birth of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam so he says in siratan nabawiyya so they might be hard words huh? get ready and this was written by an indian of course so they, people who learn the language use more harder words maybe because they they learn the more classical arabic yeah people who of urdu language and so on they use more hard but inshallah it'll be easy uh, inshallah in nasirat al nabawiyya ala sahibiha as-salatu was-salam so the biography of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says ibadatun fil haqiqa an al-risalat allati hamalaha rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam ila al-mujtama' al-bashari ibadah uh, is an expression fil haqiqa in reality an al-risala on the message which the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam carried it to the human uh, human society mujtama' society bashari so let's see beyond the shadow of a doubt the biography of, of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam it represents a complete picture beyond the shadow of a doubt ibadatun fil haqiqa okay uh, of the magnificent divine message that he communicated in order to deliver the human race from the swamp of darkness and politism. Where the, where is this? Uh, so the translation, you know, is not word to word, right? They, you know, they've made it more suitable for the English audience. So you might not find, okay, indeed, the seerah of the, and all that. Um, they've made it more, you know, this thing, it was done in 2002. So, don't don't uh, you know find that okay i want word to word translation you won't find it mostly i mean you can find mostly it'll be the same but it'll be you know they've put the order up and down and so on so from the swamp of so he says from the swamp of darknesses darkness and polytheism to the paradise of light and monotheism so it says the biography of the Prophet ﷺ is a complete picture of a message, a risala. It's a risala of the Rasulullah for the people from darkness to light. Um, he says, an authentic and comprehensive image of this message is therefore only attainable through careful study and profound analysis of both the background issues of such a biography. So he says you have to look at the background, right? So I I I I have to give the background because this requires this helps you in getting the complete picture uh, of the of the message of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the political situation over there, and so on. وَنَظْرًا إِلَى ذَلِكَ نُقَدِّمُ فَصْلًا عن أخوام العرب وتطوراتها قبل الإسلام وعن ظروف ظروف situations التي بعث فيها محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم in a view of this ونظرا إلى ذلك a whole chapter is introduced here about the nature and development of Arab tribes prior to Islam as well as the circumstances and environment that surrounded the Prophet's mission التي بعث فيها محمد which was Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم was sent what is the Dhuruf situations and uh, Tatawura developments Aqwam al Arab of the tribes of the Qawm Aqwam of the Arab groups of the Arab nation. So let's begin. What does he talk about Mawqi al Arab? 
<clears throat> Arabs, who are the Arabs? Hmm? So he begins writing Al Arabu Lugatan. Arabic, uh, Arab linguistically, linguistically, the word Arab means as Sahara. Sahara, the blue is Sahara. Sahara, which means deserts. So Arab itself means deserts. Wal Khafar. Wal Khafar, barren lands. Because Arab uh, deserts are lands which are not fertile, right? Wasteland. Khafar. Wal Ardul. I don't know this word. Mujdabah. I don't know. Let's see. Al Ardul Mujdabah. Mujdabah Khafar. Yeah. Mujdibah. Jadaba, sterile. So the verb is Jadaba. From that you create the Ismul file, I guess. Jaduba Yajdubu and Jadaba Yajdubu to become dry, arid, to be barren. Wal Ardul Mujdaba. Mujdaba. Or Mujdiba. Al Ardul Mujdiba. Yeah, Mujdiba is correct. Barren. And why is it feminine? Because Ard is feminine. So Arab literally means uh, deserts and a barren land without water or nabats, no vegetation. So ever since the dawn of history, he says dawn of history is what? Mundu aqdamil usur. Qadim Aqdam, oldest of the times, this, this term has been used for the Arabian Peninsula and its people. Ala Jazeera Til Arab. So it's a Jazeera, island, peninsula. So, Kama Atlaka Ala Kaumin Kana Tu Tilkal Ardi, Wat Takhaduha Mautinan Lahum. And its people also. They didn't translate that. Kama utlika utlika. I think this is passive, as it has been termed, ala qawmin on a people. Khatanu tilkalar. Khatanu. I I read this. Khatanu. Khatanu is to despair. But what is khatana? Khatana <clears throat> yaktun to live. Yeah. So this has Arab is actually for the land. But later on, this has been khatanu who have lived khatana yaktunu to live dwell sakana. Inhabit. So this Arab word has been fixed for those people who live in the land. Tilkal Ard. Mautinan Lahum, who have taken it as a country for them. Mauti Mautin, a place of residing for them. So Arab is also the land, but soon it was transferred to the people. Al Arabu. Al Arab. Arabiyun is one one Arab, and Arab is the Arabs. The Arabs. So now he explains, uh, uh, describes the situation of the Arabs. Wajazidatul Arabi yajiduha gharban al al ahmar. The Arabian Peninsula, Jazeera, is a, uh, this should have translated Jazeera as an island, but it's not really an island, it's a peninsula, right? A peninsula. So. So what is why is why Arab is called a peninsula? The Arab inhabitants used a north-south division of Arab Al Sham and Yemen mm. because its use had became limited to the south. The whole peninsula was simply called Arabic mm -hmm. peninsula. So what is a peninsula? I'm just a piece of land almost surrounded by water. So, island is completely surrounded. The difference between uh, peninsula and island. Land masses are categorized depending on the size. Island is secluded piece of land surrounded by water on all sides, whereas peninsula is a piece of land surrounded by water on only three sides. Oh, okay, three sides. Oh, yeah, uh, three sides, yeah. We learned it in school, but yeah, I'm just clarifying. So, Jazeera, they translate as peninsula, not an island. So, so does peninsula also mean Jazeera in Arabic? English to Arabic. Shibul uh, Khan. Shibhu Jazeera. Peninsula is literally Shibhu Jazeera. Uh, but the Sheikh, he used Jazeera to Arab. Okay. 
So it has what? Ghadban. On the west, it has Bahrul Ahmar. Shibhu Jazeera is Sina. Sinai. So he used Shibhu Jazeera. So for Arab, he used this thing. And Sinai Peninsula. Shibhu Jazeera. Oh, nice. He used Shibhu Jazeera here. Shibhu Jazeera, Sinai. Washadakan al Khalij. So on the west, it has what? Uh, the this thing. Um, what do you call The Red Sea, Bahr al Ahmar, and in the east by the Arabian Gulf. Washadakan al Khalij al Arabi is called Arabian Gulf. In the south, Wajuzun Kabirun min Bilad al Iraq al Junubiyah. So east is Iraq and all that. Yeah, Arabian Gulf. Bilal al Gharq al Iraq al Junub Junubiya. Wa Junuban Bahr al Arab al Ladi who are imtada li Bahr al Hind. And in the south, Junub, what it has uh, in the south by Arabian Sea, which is an extension of the Indian Ocean. Wa Shamal Wa Shamalan Bilad al Sham. Wa Shamalan is it Shamal? Wa Juzun min Bilad al Iraq al Ikhtilaf fi fi baadi hadi al Hudud. وتقدر مساحتها ما بين مليون ميل مربع إلى مليون ثلاثة مئة ألف ميل مربع. And in North by Sham, ancient Syria, among parts of Iraq, the area is estimated between one million and one million and three hundred square miles. Square miles is called مربع. Yeah, square miles. So, okay. So he says Arabian Peninsula on the west it has the Red Sea. Uh, 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 uh. Let me show the map, maybe. It'll be more interesting, I guess. Okay. Google Maps. Okay, here we are. Let me share the map. One second. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. are. This is Arabia. So this is the Red Sea here, right? Red Sea here. In the south, we have the Gulf of Aden and the Arabian Sea, south of it. This is the Arabian Peninsula because three sides, right? One, two, three. On the north, we have Iraq and uh, and other parts. And this whole thing was Sham, the ancient uh, Lebanon, Jordan, Sham. And what did he say south was? And south was yeah, south was the sea. And so you see all of this, all of this is here. So this, this is the Arabian Peninsula, the classical Arabian Peninsula. Saudi Arabia, Red Sea. On the right side, you have the Gulf, Arabian Gulf, all this Iran, Iraq, and so on. Uh, Gulf of Aid, Aden, Aden, Arabian Sea. Okay. So this is the, you get a good idea of the geography of it. I, I don't like geography, but <laughs> yeah, here we are. All right. So what happened? Why did he explain this, all this, you know? How many million? Uh, so 1 million and 1 million and 300,000 square miles. So there's 1 million or 1 million 300 square miles. Million. Well, Jaziratu laha ahmiyatu baligha. So why did he give this geography? He says that thanks to his geographical position, the peninsula has always had strategic importance. Natural, well, geography, geographical position, geography. Um, so, al geography. It is geography or yeah, geography, geography. فأما باعتبار وضعها الداخلي فهي محاطة بالصحراء والرمال رمال من كل جانب والرمال رمال بتكسرة من كل جانب. so the peninsula always has you know بالغة uh, strategic importance considering its internal features comprise mostly deserts and arid areas. رمال Added areas, dry areas, which made it an 
inaccessible, inaccessible to foreigners and invaders. So you cannot invade uh, easily, right? Uh, allowed its people complete liberty and independence through ages, despite the presence of two neighboring great empires. So we had the Persian Empire here and Roman, right? Still, they were not able to conquer uh, Arabia because deserts and who will come to desert? Umin adli had al wadi sa la til jazida to his nan mani and a fort. It became, you know, a fort mani and prohibiting, you know, enclosed fort. La yes mahu lil ajani bi an yahta luha yahta la yahta lu an yahta luha wa yes yes it was. I don't know this word. Yaisituha, Yaisitu Aleha, Saitaratahum. I don't know what Yaisituha. Ehtala is to occupy, same thing. Yaisitu. Or is it Yapsutu? Yapsutu. Is it a ba? Yeah, I think it's a ba. Basata Yapsutu. Uh, to spread. Yeah, Basata Yapsutu to spread the hand. Ala Saitarati him, the domination. Saitara. Domination, control, when uh, nufud him, nufud implementation, nufud influence yeah, and the influence on them. وَلِذَلِكَ نَرَى سُكَانَ الْجَزِيرَةِ أَحْرَارًا and that is why we see the citizens of the peninsula أَحْرَارًا free في جميع الشعون منذ أقدم العصور in all matters since the oldest of times, oldest of ages. مع أنهم كانوا مجاوذين لإمبراطوري إمبراطوري تي تيني إمبراطور 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 right same thing إمبراطور عظيمة تيني even though they had two uh, this thing uh, uh, two kingdoms عظيمة تيني لم يكونوا يستطيعون دفع حجماته لولا هذا السد المنيع they were not able to دفع they, uh, they allowed it independence which made it inaccessible to foreigners and invaders right? all this thing دفع حجماتها حجماتها which is helping and defending in their attacks حجمات attacks they could not attack uh, this thing uh, Arabia. وأما, then he says, وأما بالنسبة إلى الخارج فإنها تقع بين الخارات المعروفة في العالم القديم. Its external setting on the higher. نسبة إلى الخارج فإنها تقع بين الخارات المعروفة caused it to be the center of the Asian world. It was بين الخارات المعروفة the continents, known continents في العالم القديم in the Asian world. وتلتقي بها برا وبحرا and it joins the land and the sea, hmm? provided it with sea and land links. So you see the land, and there's a sea below. فَإِنَّ نَاحِيَتِهَ الشَّمَالِيَّةِ الْغَذْبِيَّةِ بَابٌ لِلْدُّخُولِ فِي خَارَّةِ إِفْرِيقِيَّةِ So, uh, they didn't translate this, great. <clears throat> so from the northern side, Shamalia, or sh is it Shamal or Shimal? I keep getting confused. I think it's Shamal and Shamalia. Yeah. In Urdu, it's Shimal. So, it's Shamalia al Ghadbiya. So, from the northern and the western side, so there's north and there's west. Babun lit dukhuli fi kharati ifriqiya. You can go to the African continent. Wa nahiyatiha or nahiyatuha fa inna nahiyataha. So, wa nahiyataha is Shamalia. Sharkiya. So from northwest you can go to Africa, uh, from the north and east. Mafatihu Likarati Uruba. Shamaliya Sharkiya. Shark East. you can go to Europe from the northeast, says Shark. Maybe not exactly northeast, but north and west. That's also northwest, no? Miftahu Likarati Uruba. When Nahi Nahiya the Sharkiya and from the north of Tuhabab al Ajam. الشرق الأوسط الأدنى from the east right? from the east uh, you can go to أبواب العجم the doors of عجم foreign areas foreign areas yeah عجم is foreign والشرق الأوسط and شرق الأوسط is the middle east 
من الشرق الاوسط والادنى and what now means small the near and nearest okay yeah so from the east you go to the middle east and the nearest what to the ilal hindi was seen and goes to india and china so you can go to india and china yeah, like this or something وَكَذَلِكَ تَلْتَخِي كُلَّ قَارَةٍ بِالْجَزِيرَةِ بَحْرًا And similarly, every uh, continent meets with the jazeera in sea, sea routes. So you can see all the seas, right? وَتُرْسِي سُفُنَهَا Arsa, you will see. Uh, anchor, anchor, lay down. Anchor. The, so the ships used to lay anchor at that time. بَوَاخِرُهَا uh, بَوَاخِر I don't know what is بَوَاخِر Steamships also. Steamboats. على ميناء الجزيرة رأسا ميناء ميناء is the harbor ميناء harbor الجزيرة رأسا uh, of the harbor of the this thing الجزيرة of the peninsula رأسا at the head maybe I don't know what رأسا he means didn't translate all this that's why the English islands port hmm. yeah رأسا I don't know what he means by the head. So maybe at the head point, the the all the ships land here. الجغرافي كان شمال الجزيرة وجنوبها مهبة للأمم ومركزا للتبادل التجارة. Because of all these geographical positions, uh, the north and the south, it was مهبط. It was a descending place for a landing place. For the umam, for the tribe, for the uh, various nations, and was center markazan li tabadul tijara, tabadul for the exchange of tijara, with tahafa and culture, with diana and religion, with funun and skills. So this was all about location of the Arabs. So this is a geographical location of the Arabs. Inshallah, in our next class, we'll start with. So they give some pictures here, pictures, pictures. This is multicolor mountains pictures, great. And no food, great desert. No food, nice. So some pictures for deserts. So give, they give a map here. We can see here. Okay, nice map. Let's zoom out a little bit. All right, let's see the map. So this is Hijaz here. This is Madian. Hmm. Madian is here. Aqaba is here. Wow, nice. Sinai Desert, Sinai. Egypt is here, so you go through here to Egypt. Mm, this is the Nuba, Abyssinia, Habasha, because from uh, this thing, uh, from Judah, they traveled here, no? Abyssinia. This is the Red Sea, of course. Najran was here. So this is Makkah. Najran was down south. Sana'a, Yemen, of course. Hadramaut is here. Al Yamama, tribes of Yamama. You have to go here, Yamama. Uh, there was a battle also, right? Hmm. This is called Najd. This is called Najd. This is called Hijaz. Yambur is here. Yambur is also a trading place. And Nafud Desert is here. Nafud. All this is Nafud. This is Bahrain. The Prophet sent letters to Bahrain also. What is this? The I don't know. And then we have Iraq here. Kurdistan. And Bilad al-Sham. North was all Bilad al-Sham. Jordan, Syria and all that. Shyam. Nice Cyprus, very beautiful city. Muslims conquered it for some days. I think it's in Turkey now. I don't know. Cyprus, <clears throat> minor Asia, Greece. Okay, nice, nice map. And this is Western region called Madai and Saleh. Madayin as Saleh. So this is Saleh alayhi salam's people. Madayin, Madian. Saleh, they used to cheat and all these things. No? Uh, and there's a hadith also, I think the Prophet also, when he was going to uh, Tabuk, he met this, I mean, he saw, so the Prophet also said, uh, Madian, or it was it Aad or Thamud, uh, somewhere in one hadith, the Prophet also said, you have to travel while crying. Like, so these people, they used to treat Salih uh, Islam's people in transactions. Mm, nice. I don't know which photo is this. I think maybe Madian again. So Allah's adab came to these people. Hills in the southwestern regions, southwest. These are the hills. This is the map center. Uh, Gulf of Oman, Sajstan, Karman, foothills on the mountain of 
Southern Hijaz Al Baha. So Southern Hijaz. Okay, nice. This is Al Baha. So where's Baha? Did they show it in the map? Southern Hijaz. No, they did not. Baha. Nice photos. All right, this is the geographical position of the Arab tribes. Now we'll actually go to the Akwam al Arab, the Arab tribes, inshallah, in our next class. Uh, we just looked at the location that it has strategical importance. It has, you know, nobody could attack easily. It's all desert. So they had freedom, complete freedom. It also was a center for trade, culture, Hijaz and Najd and Yamama. And they used to go, Rehlat uh, al Shita, it was safe. Winter and summer, they used to go top from Makkah and then in summer, they used to go down there. Um, so all these things will come, inshallah ta'ala, about nature of tribes. What type of tribes lived at that time, at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who was in Bahrain, who was in Yemen, who was uh, in uh, the Roman Empire, the Persian Empire, and all those things, inshallah, we'll look at them. In our next class, whenever it is, inshallah, maybe after 15 days inshallah because i have so many series going on so let's see when it comes inshallah if you find it interesting let me know barakallahu fikum rahiqul maktum is a very good book you know it it tells you point by point everything and uh, inshallah we'll keep reading this whenever it's possible and keep going through the life of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam رحمه لله العالمين بارك الله فيكم جزاك الله خيرا سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته